Hey guys, I'm I'm struggling here. Hey guys, Ron Callis with One Firefly. Welcome to another episode of Automation Unplugged, show number 69. You can see there I just clicked on the wrong button. I think I shocked Mark. He's like, what? I thought I had a minute or two. Uh, anyway, today is Wednesday, March 20th. It's uh, just a little bit after 1230. I hope uh, everyone is having a great day, a great start to your week. And uh, let me jump over here uh, to Facebook. We are streaming live into Facebook and or if you are listening to the recording, then we are um, simply maybe only in your ears via the, the podcast. So let me just make sure that we are in fact streaming live. So bear with me. As you can hear, uh, it is allergy season. Uh, I'm here in South Florida, and uh, allergy season is upon us, and uh, I am fighting through it. Uh, maybe like many of you, uh, I suffer from allergies, and it's just as much as you want to celebrate spring. Of course, it's I'm in Florida, so it's always spring or summer year-round. But regardless, apparently some plants do open up and let their pollen out, and man, it's holy hallelujah. So uh, anyway, I will do my best to clear myself off uh, off mic uh, as we go here. Uh, I am excited to bring you uh, a fun interview with Mark from Miro Concepts, and uh, I've known Mark now for about a year or so, and uh, uh, he's a client over at One Firefly. And uh, he's got an exciting business he's running out of Austin, Texas. And uh, in fact, Mark was uh, kind enough to host Team One Firefly in December at his facilities there in Austin and uh, uh, demo all of the technology in his showroom uh, for our team. We flew about 30 people in to Austin and uh, he hosted us and did a Q&A session with the team. They could ask him questions about being an integrator and uh, it was a lot of fun. So let's go ahead and meet Mark. Let me pull him in. Uh, let's see here, here he comes. There he, this time it's for real, Mark. Hey, Ron, <laughs> sorry. I yeah, didn't know it was yeah, sorry about clicking the button prematurely. And uh, I saw your face. You were like, you gave me the, uh, oh, no face. Oh, crap. I'm not ready. So, how are you today? I'm great. It is uh, gorgeous here. Finally, we have some sun. Uh, it's about almost 70 degrees here. And uh, we will be kicking off our allergies soon also. Oh, yeah. Awesome. I, well, I, what is the plants or the trees or the shrubs that are, are the culprit down there? Mostly here is cedar. A lot of times that's uh, the big culprit uh, and that can wreak I've heard it. It's called cedar fever, right? That is a real thing. And you can actually see the cedar uh, exploding off of the trees. So what you think is like rain or a haze will actually be the cedar itself. The cedar pollen moving through town. Cedar pollen, correct. Uh, so I've lived here now 19 years. Um, they say it takes about two years to get affected by it. And I can say that I get affected by it. Oh, wow. So it's interesting. So it's not like your body starts fighting it immediately. You have to be exposed to it enough times to where your body then starts fighting it. Yeah, and then you're kind of going, why do I feel off today? Why am I, I got congested. My eyes are itching. I don't, Am I getting a cold? I don't know. And it happens about twice a year. So, Got it. All right. Well, I, I feel your pain, man. And uh, I was just uh, on the phone this morning with Jason Knott from CE Pro, and uh, he's up in Boston. And uh, he was saying snow is still on the ground, but uh, as soon as that snow melts, they'll, they'll be suffering the same, same effects up there probably in a matter of weeks. Yes. So, exactly. Mr. Mark, um, for those listening – uh, they may not know much yet about you and your your past and where you come from and, and how you came to uh, be running and operating uh, Miro Concepts. So I always love on these interviews to kind of start out with just about you and, and maybe your backstory, if you'd be so kind. Yeah, so I started, uh, I was in college in the 90s and mid-90s and started with a company uh, called West Tech uh, security, doing custom security systems. And 
uh, really gravitated towards that, learned uh, how to work within clients' environments, retrofit, wiring. Uh, and so that kind of took me into the industry and I got, I got the bug. Um, and did that for a few years and then realized the industry was kind of more focused on contracts and not so much the actual project itself. And so I kind of walked away from it and, uh, then ended up at Apple for, uh, moved out here, ended up at Apple for about a decade and kind of honed customer service and working with clients and, um, yeah, that kind of. Um, so you were with Apple there in Austin. Yes, so we they have a campus here. Uh, it's now about six thousand, almost seven thousand employees. At the time, we were only fifteen hundred. Um, That's a big. So, what do they do? Out of curiosity, what do they do out of Austin? What so is that? everything from operations to payroll to engineering to education, all of that is done here in Austin. Okay. And when you were uh, with Apple, what department were you in? What were your, what were I you doing? Uh, education group. So I worked with schools around the country, kind of walk, walking them through how we do our, um, how we present our product. It wasn't just about the speeds and feeds. It was how to integrate Apple into their environment. I got it. And how did you then land from Apple to running an integration firm? So that came about, I have a friend who's still my friend, surprisingly, and a neighbor that had uh, four restaurants. And um, he was uh, just had very complex control systems in his restaurant that never seemed to work correctly. So um, he engaged me to come out and take a look. And I started helping him out. And he was building new restaurants. And so I started kind of helping him design and do the new aspects of his new restaurants. And were you, were you incorporating Apple products? I mean, is that how that was. So, just go back to your past. And I, I think I read here that you got your start in the nineties in the security business. So were you drawing on that experience or were you trying to, you know, put Mac minis in his restaurant to run I it or something? Mac minis in the restaurant to control his security cameras. Uh, that's you were. yes, truly was. I was like, there's no need for PCs. We'll do all Macs. Uh, we can figure out how to make Apple integrate into your environment. So everything I was looking at was a, um, based on an Apple platform or back end. Okay. Interesting. And so when, when did you ultimately start Miro Concepts? 2013, officially, October 18th of 2013 is when I officially started. Got it. And can you describe your business today? Kind of, you know, what areas do you serve? What type of projects do you do? Resi? Do you do commercial? Do you do both? You know? So we are predominantly uh, commercial, 70%, 30% residential but we take a residential approach to our commercial projects. So we want to make the commercial environments feel more like a home environment. Uh, and so we focus on delivering a more thorough compl complementary service and solution. We're not just throwing in very industrial type look or feel. We're very focused on our team. And then when I say we, it's our guys truly, um, the, the, you know, I'm more like just a coach. Um, and I've got a small team of guys that really kind of show off our, our capability. Are, are you doing most of your work there in Austin or are you, you doing work out throughout Texas or where, so, where do you take on projects? We take central Austin. Uh, we'll go up to Waco, out to Houston. Um, but we focus mostly in the central Austin area. Okay. Interesting. And a little bit about your product mix, if you don't mind. Like, what are some of the brands you're proud that you represent? Uh, we are proud to represent Control 4, James Loudspeaker, Rebel Speakers, uh, Savant Systems. Um, we do um, a lot with those companies, Sony XBR, uh, LG OLED, um, Epson, Screen Innovations, who's a local company here in Austin. They do amazing uh, screens and we uh, have really had great success with them. 
Got it. Okay. That's pretty cool. Well, I'm going to throw up here on the screen. Uh, uh, I'm going to attempt to do this, see if I can be a little bit better with technology. Look at that. I made your website show up on. Yeah, look at that beautiful website. And look at that beautiful, man, I wonder who designed that website. Yeah, did this. You know, funny thing. Uh, we had, this is the fifth iteration of our website. And this is the first time that I found somebody that actually listened to what we were looking for and de delivered something new. The, the previous four are, um, were just iterations of the first site, which I was never really satisfied with because I wanted to tell a story about working with us. And I wanted, you know, I, I remember distinctly with you guys saying, I want, I don't want stock imagery. I want our imagery. I want our work to show. I want people to feel like they're in our, um, you know, what they're going to experience when we're in their environment. So, um, and I wanted it to be clean and simple. And I always wanted it to be um, current and fresh, right? You know, a lot of integration firms, they'll do a site in 2006, and then they don't change anything for 10 years. And you go to the site and you're like, well, are they still in business? Are they still relevant? Uh, you know, what are they doing? They could be great firms and have really uh, tremendous capabilities. But if this, if the first impression that a client sees is a site that's 10 years old, you know, what, what can they expect for them to do in their environment? Right. So um, that's something that we really you guys hit it out of the park with our with our site. Um, you do something, Mark, that many integrators do not do, and that is you actually take pictures of the stuff that you work on. Correct. It's such a novel idea, right? It's so uh, crazy <laughs> I mean, that you work on all these beautiful projects. It really would be cool if you took pictures of it. And we uh, try like, to take pictures and stage them. How did you know to do that? Um, well, I had a little photography bug in me as a kid growing up, but... I also want things to present, you know, to, to the picture to tell a story, uh, not just a picture of, you know, well, there, as I say this, not just a picture of the rack, but, you know, to tell the story about the this farm, <laughs> let the client see, but, you know, racks and how we organize is important, but kind of just show the, the actual environment itself. Now, that's, that's pretty cool. What, what sort of feedback have you received since you launched the new website last year? Sorry, I'm really bad at this. I talked over you. Can you tell me what, what was that question again? No, that's okay. I said, what was your experience? What sort of feedback have you received from your your customers or folks that have been visiting your website? Is it they, been positive or? Very positive. Very positive. We, a lot of clients that come to us have said, I looked at your website. You guys look like you're doing a lot of great things. Um, we like the look. Um, we like your design language. So let's, you know, that opens the door to a conversation with us. Now, one other thing, one, one of the many things that you do, Mark, that's pretty unique from my observation, or the, I guess the, the viewpoint I have or vantage point I have um, working with lots of different integrators, um, but you're doing something in particular. By the way, I'm going to throw a comment up on the screen. Um, Maggie says, uh, beautiful modern website. Definitely my style. Plus orange is my jam. There you go. <laughs> I can Thank tell you. a story about the orange thing too. Some people yeah, are, please. they go, Hey, is that your, you know, orange, that must be your favorite color. And I'm like, actually growing up, red was my favorite color, but, um, I was sat at in a marketing, um, uh, program back in 2000, I think it was. And, this team was talking to us about how orange was going to be the new branding color going forward. Like there had been iterations of blue being the color and then it was going to go into orange. Uh, and so that's kind of where I uh, picked up the orange coloring aspect. So purely out of a seminar based on, you know, recommendations or best practices. Yeah, it was that's where I picked it up and you know what, it does stand out and I'll show you, I'm committed to, so these are my other pair of glasses I wear. Uh, when I'm needing to see, yep. uh, uh -huh. so they are actually oh, with the orange outline. There's an orange vein through them. Uh, so That's... yeah. So yeah, if no, I hold those down, back up. I'm going to put you full screen now so everyone can see that orange. Let, let's see it. Yeah. So there, there it is. Go. Oh, that's funny. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. So, anyway, I do care about branding, as you can see, down to uh, everything we do from our business cards to the cabling we pull through our projects. We want our stuff to be, we want to know what our pieces are. So we even have our cable in orange, gray, and white. So Now, you have also, and I just threw it up on the screen here, you've also chosen as um, – an integrator to also be active on Instagram and uh, not many integrators from my experience, you know, I'm going to say, I don't know, maybe less than maybe less than 50 or less than a hundred or something like that. You know, at least in North America here are very active on Instagram um, and you are active on Instagram. Kind of what's your take on that? How do you see that platform being used to help drive your business? I like it because, it, again, it tells a story with pictures. It's succinct. It's clean, simple. It's all about our design. Um, and we lets us tell our stories in a very uh, fast, simple way um, and uh, doesn't have a lot of noise around it for, from what we see. So that's kind of why I liked it. And, again, it lets us show off uh, through photography and video. Uh, we also put some videos up there. And we don't do anything amazing with our, you know, the video, I'm, uh, there's one that I shot there that was on a Sunday. Um, and that piece is, um, I did that in one shot, one take and did it with my iPhone um, and got the timing down. And what we were trying to show there in that uh, particular piece is that from the movie soundtrack to the act, from the movie to the soundtrack, we can uh, incorporate that into a client's environment. So we can not only provide you with an amazing experience to watch the movie. We can also have a great two channel experience to listen to the sound. Uh, yeah. It looks like you're getting pretty good engagement on these uh, social posts. So if you're out there watching this or listening on Instagram, uh, you'll find them at Miro underscore concepts.com. So what I'm going to do here just to help out my, <laughs> My folks that are more visual, I'm actually going to – let's see if I can get my technology to behave. There we go. So there's the uh, the Instagram channel for Miro Concepts. Check them out. Follow Mark and uh, and his team and see all the beautiful pictures that they are posting. Yeah, and, and, you know, I want you – before you go off that page, the one with the sure. vacuum cleaner, um, those are some of the things that I – you know, I encourage other um, integrators focus on something that's unique. That's you know, not just the picture of the rack or the picture of the AV receiver, right? We know that we do that, but tell the story about how you treat the client's environment, how you care about everything from when you step, you know, step on site. That you know, our guys walk in with their vacuum cleaners, and we chose Mila because you know, like I said in that story there. No one wants a shop vac in their house, right? No one likes that loud sound. So, you know, one of those things we we chose those vacuums because they're quiet, they're not obtrusive. It's what a client's already used to hearing in their house. They know what we're going to take care of their environment, that we are going to clean up after ourselves. Um, and so, you know, take those pieces and focus on that because that kind of shows the client a little different story about what you do. No, that's very cool. I appreciate that. So there you go. I'm going to turn the uh, crawler off. Uh, I am going to come back over here to the website just in case anyone is interested in visiting you online. If you're listening to this audio, it is uh, MiroConcepts.com. And uh, I'm going to put that up on the screen here. And uh, don't forget, if you're out there listening to this, um, and if we are live and you're listening, please post your questions and or comments for Mark. I will do my best to read them off live to Mark and uh, you'll get his live feedback. If you are listening uh, to the recording or watching the recording, you still can post a comment and uh, both Mark and I will be uh, auditing the comments uh, over time. So definitely uh, we'll, we'll get your replies even if you reply after the fact, after we are live. Most of our viewership, by the way, Mark, happens uh, on the, the replay. 
oh. or um, after the fact, you know, we'll have a, a handful of people watch us live here. And then, you know, over the course of the next month or so, we'll have a few thousand people check us out. Then I shouldn't be so nervous right now. <laughs> Oh no! Definitely, no one's watching. Okay, no, yeah. no reason. No, 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 no. I don't want to dismiss those that are watching. I love you, and I appreciate that you're watching. But um, I do too. Yeah, right? Mark. Yeah, yeah. No one's watching. Just you know, no reason to be nervous. All right, there we go. I'm gonna pull that down. Now, Mark, I was hoping we could, um, I want to touch on a number of topics, uh, kind of rapid fire topics, if you're game. Um, one is, you know, you did spend uh, a good chunk of your career at Apple and you had some pretty, I, I'm imagining some pretty interesting takeaways that you've then adapted or applied to running your integration business. And I was just wondering, you know, what are those or what, what are some of those things that have come top of mind? So top of mind, one of the big things we would always, you know, what that was driven at Apple was to surprise and delight. Um, and that can be little things to big things. It's just setting an expectation and not um, oversetting that expectation. And then giving little delights to the client, meaning like, you know, just the little touches that maybe they don't think about, but when they look back, they kind of go, oh, wow, that, you know, I wasn't expecting that. Or, um, you know, one of the, showing up when you're supposed to show up is actually surprisingly a surprise and delight to some clients or finishing the project. Um, so I took away that. I also took away a design aesthetic. So um, I wanted things to be very clean. And you've been at our office. You kind of see our design language. You kind of can get an idea. But when we bring clients in, that's when they kind of get the aha moment of, you know, for us, it's not just these pieces that we're putting in. It's really the whole experience that they're getting. Um, and that we really try not to disrupt their environment. Uh, we want we want the tools to allow them to to enjoy their environment. What what would you say? I actually I see that uh, visually I look a little pixelated, so I don't know. Can you hear me okay, Mark? I hear you fine, but you are a little pixelated. I don't know how I am on my end, but no, I, no, you're coming through crystal clear. So it might be my local yeah, network. Your network? We can come out there. Well. And yeah, I, I do think I need some network help for sure. I appreciate the offer. I'll just I'll fly you right in. We'll get that taken care of. Uh, so, what, Mark? What would you say that your firm is superlative at? What are, What are you guys best at? Uh, there's lots of people in the Austin market. There's lots of people for sure in the Texas marketplace. What do you guys think you do best? I, for I think it's our team and how we interact with our clients. I think that's the best thing we do. I truly do. I don't think uh, we are doing, you know, I, I tell people all the time, and, and this is why I'm, I try to be really engaged with other integrators in this market, in this area. Um, Austin has a lot of animosity uh, within this division or within the um, CI channel because so many of them came from other companies and, you know, thought they could start their own companies. and. Um, but for, for, for what we do, there's no secret, super secret sauce that we have, right? There's no patented thing that we're doing. We just engage our clients, provide them with good service, follow up, stay on top of the project. We never want to be the, the group that prevents, uh, especially in the commercial environment, we never want to be the group that slows down the project. So um, just having that open line of communication and being engaged with them, that's really what sets us apart, I think. that That's what makes us fit in. And given that you have been in business now um, for a number of years, you, you started this business in 2013, you know, I, I and I know you well enough and you and I talked offline, you know, there's there's been some lessons along the way when you're running a business, you know, I and I've shared with you a bunch of my lessons that I've yeah. learned along along the way. Um, many of those listening are running their own business and or those businesses are at varying levels of tenure in the marketplace. Are there some uh, learnings that you have that are kind of top of mind, some things that you wouldn't mind sharing with others that you've kind of along the way learned to focus on or to, to, to make better? Yes, definitely stay focused. Uh, 
don't squirrel or get attracted to the shiny stuff as much. That's one of the things I've had some difficulty learning was, you know, we'd have different vendors come in and, you know, in the moment you start, you know, a bad pun, you know, you start really just, they're pumping something into the air. You start really believing in everything that they're saying. And then you make this whole paradigm shift in your company and don't, don't realize how disruptive um, that can be. Um, and it truly is disruptive. And we, we went through that a few times where it really kind of um, threw us off our game and had us not focus on what we should be doing. Um, and so, uh, you know, pick, pick a product and alignment that is going to support you. That's going to keep, um, you know, when you do have an issue, cause realize it's all technology and there's going to be problems from time to time, but those companies that support you, that stand behind you, that are quick to, get something uh, resolved, um, those are the companies align with. Um, it's not about what's the cheapest company or what company has the shiniest thing or, or what one is the bleeding edge on technology. One of the things we've really resisted right now is uh, voice control for that reason, because we don't know where that's at yet. And so we don't really introduce it into a client's environment unless they truly ask for it. Um, and if they do, we kind of talk them through it and explain like, here's the pros and cons, and this is what you kind of can expect. And, you know, you're only going to get 94% accuracy. And that sounds like a lot, but it really is not a, a high uh, mark for voice recognition because as soon as you have to talk scripted or um, kind of figure out how you need to phrase something to make a command happen, well, then it's not natural and it doesn't fit in. Um, and then they, they stop using it. And then it was just this shiny thing. So, that's one of the things that we've really, you know, we're now taking a step back and looking at things and going, okay, what, who's the tried and true? What product makes the most sense? What can allow us to be efficient and streamlined and not deliver just a bunch of pieces that um, are not going to play well together? No, that, that makes sense. So, you know, staying focused on brands and looking at more than just price, but looking at the total package of uh, what that vendor is bringing to you in support, in products, and in innovation, in, and price, all of that together and not jumping too quickly. Is that yeah, one I, of the, the primary takeaways? I think so. And, you know, one of the things we talked about offline was, um, you know, I grew up in a generation that, and I, I like you know, as soon as we could have CDs and just skip, right? It gave us this ability to go to that next song. Well, that can happen in business too. You think, oh, I can just change instantly. And, and while it's good to be nimble and not become just set in your old ways and miss where things are going to or miss how the industry's progressing, um, give things some time. Don't be the first to react. Um, let things work themselves out a little bit because when you do that big change, you're not only affecting yourself as the owner, you're affecting your guys and girls that are work, you know, that are working on your team with you. You're affecting your clients. There's a lot of disruptions that happen. Um, and then vendors start to question why they want to work with you because you're just pivoting to whatever that next shiny piece is. And so then you're having to rebuild those relationships with them and, and it's it just you don't see it up front like oh I'm going to save a little bit of money over here and this is going to be great and then, and then you six months down the line you look back and go that cost me so much money because now my guys my team when they went out couldn't be as efficient at doing this project because they were trying to learn another whole thing um, and so that, well, that makes sense. By the way, I want to throw up there just because uh, Stephanie had made a comment and I want to put it up on the screen there for you. She says, uh, Stephanie says, your Instagram is awesome. I love the idea of showcase showcasing previous projects. She actually asks you a question, Mark. She says, have you noticed a shift in what homeowners are looking for in their projects as smart tech begins to grow? Yes. So are you seeing a Great change point. in consumer demand? We are. So... You know, my buddy uh, JJ, who's with Digital Delight um, out in Houston, him and I. I talk. think he gave us a like here on this video. I don't I know if JJ is watching live. So, um, him and I um, always talk about the industry. We probably talk at least once every two weeks. We try to get on a call, and he'll come out and visit. I have, 
you know, we went to Houston once for a little bit, but um, him, him and I talk about these things and realize to answer her question, there is a change. There's a change in these com the companies like Eero and Logitech and Sonos, the ones that are um, flying the flag, as we like to say, the ones that are really promoting the conversation with the client, um, they're getting them to think about, oh, I, you know what, I want to do whole house audio or, you know, my internet is kind of slow in this area. I have a dead spot here. I don't have great coverage. And so it allows us to have these conversations with them, but we also have to set expectations at the same time, because while certain things fit well in certain environments, uh, other things don't. And some things you want to um, be doing some traditional, but then have some of the newer pieces in that environment. Um, and so in that we have to, you know, a lot of conversation now is everybody's going to streaming. Um, a lot of people are, quote unquote, cutting the cord, which I hate to, it's such a, cause you're really not cutting the cord to, you're not really saving money. You know, you add in Netflix, you put on uh, maybe Hulu on top of that. Then you maybe subscribe to HBO. But all of a sudden you're back up to, you're getting into a cable bill. But what it does do is it allows you to in, consume and enjoy those pieces on more devices. So you're not, uh, locked to just sitting, I'm going to sit in front of my TV and this is what I'm going to watch. And I have this guide and I have all these channels that maybe I don't really pay, you know, that I need. Um, but now you're uh, shifting and saying, okay, I'm going to do Netflix with Hulu and I'm going to be able to watch this on my Apple TV or my Roku, but then I can take that to my iPad or my tablet. And, and so I, clients are asking for that. They're asking for, you know, we get a lot of discussion around, Hey, I'm thinking of cutting the cord. Talk to me about that. So we try it here ourselves and and kind of flush out what services we think are um, doing well and uh, kind of present you know that to the client and let them know the pros and cons of you know simply stopping a traditional service. Got it. And uh, Stephanie, thanks for that question. And and Mark, uh, thanks for your insight there. You know, Mark. In running a business, I think I again talked to you uh, offline. You know, I think it's one of the harder things anyone could ever try to figure out how to do. Yes. Um, I know I've talked to people that make it sound easy, but it hasn't been my experience. It is easier now only because I've purchased so many lessons along the way. Um, and in the case of integrators, these technology contractor types of which I'm putting you into that category. Um, what, what is your opinion on kind of where you started and where you are now in terms of your financial intelligence about your business? Yes, that's a great question. And we talked a lot about it. So, um, you know, I started out and I had some very large projects, fortunately, that started me off into the industry doing a friend's, restaurant uh because it was a large restaurant it was a you know almost eight thousand square foot restaurant and we did a full array of tvs and video distribution and uh distributed audio and um that got me to go wow there's a lot of potential in this industry and i started looking at things the wrong way in the beginning i was looking at revenue numbers and not looking at what things were costing me which I think a lot of business owners probably do. I'm learning that, um, you know, you've got to pay attention to your overall cost um, and realize that while something shows on a piece of paper, this cost, what are you putting out there and how many times are you having to go back to that project and um, take care of it? And where is it appropriate to charge the client? And where did you miss the mark on the, the, the rate, or maybe you, maybe you overcharge. We've had that sometimes that feeling of like, you know, did I put too many hours into this project? Did I put too much on it? You know? And so those are things that I had to learn along the way. Um, I feel, you know, my dad gave me a piece of advice a few, this is a little while back about, you know, running your business and going through the trials and tribulations that you're going to hit and that you've gone through, you're going to get your MBA meaning you're not going to get your MBA traditional sense sitting in a classroom, but you're going to learn a lot of things um, very quickly about what it takes to run a business and why it's not as 
you know, the Instagram is a nice shiny piece, right? And Facebook makes us show our best light. And um, our website is a great story. Um, but behind the scenes, there's so many moving pieces and so many things that have to align. Uh, and that's the difficult part. That's the part that you that you spend probably 80% of your time trying to figure out is how am I going to keep my guys, you know, in a project? Are they on the right project? Is this job the right job for us? Learning to, you know, say the proverbial no to things. Um, that's a lot of things that we had to learn was, you know, just because this presents this number of revenue doesn't mean that this makes sense for us. And, you know, just recently you said no to a project, right? You, you had an opportunity so, presented to you and it, it didn't feel right. It was real. It was this week, this past Monday. Um, we went out to a client. It was our second visit out there. He had this beautiful home theater that he had done back in the nineties and he was going to refresh it again. But um, the way he wanted to do it and everything, he had all his components picked and already purchased. He had all of his things. He essentially was engineering the project and wanted us to put it in. And one of the things, and it would have been a nice, you know, looking at the revenue number, what we were thinking it could have potentially been, would have been nice, but I couldn't find the end game. And that's the thing I look for now. When I propose a project or when our, I'm thinking about when we're going to take on something is, Where's the end game? When, when am I going to finalize that delivery? And I just felt like I couldn't get there with this project. And, um, and it wasn't going to be our design. And it wouldn't be anything that we would have truly done. It wasn't that he was picking out beautiful equipment. I mean, his equipment was great. It's just stuff we don't work with on a regular basis. So these efficiencies all of a sudden start going away. And, and then my guys are going to have to learn all these new things and, you know, are we delivering truly what the client wants? Do we have the ability um, to get the carpenters in there that need to be in there because he wants to sink the projector into the ornate woodwork that he has at the back of the theater to hide the projector? Um, and so when we met with him, he's like, okay, um, this is what I like to do. And we talked about, we met with him for over, it was, we were probably there for almost two hours. And, um, and then he goes, I need this by Wednesday because I want to make a decision by Thursday. Well, that was my first red flag, okay, that there's no way I could put that whole solution in place, have accurate numbers to him, know exactly where my cost was going to come in at by, in, in, in three days. And so I didn't think it was fair to myself. I didn't think it was fair to the client. It wouldn't have been fair to my guys because it would all have been just crap shoots. Um, uh, and that's one thing I've learned I don't want to do anymore. And Were so I, there times in your career where you would have just said yes to that and yes. taken it on? Oh, okay. <laughs> let me, I'll back up that project. The rest of the client, uh, the friend of mine that has the restaurants. Uh, yes. If I was a wise man back then, I would have said no. I was still working at Apple at the time when we took on. I was kind of transitioning out of my pro, my position at Apple and getting this. And he presented me with this great big project. And I'm like, okay, I think I can do it now because I was able to control the design and I was able to build it out the way I thought would best fit in with their environment. And, uh, it worked, but being, if I look back at that and go, would I do that again? I don't know. That was pretty risky, but sometimes you got to take the risk. But I, I think like you got to have a bit of naivete to start a business to begin with. I don't care what that business is. You got to, there's a bit of often a lack of knowing what you're getting into. Because uh, if you actually knew what you're getting into, you might not actually do it. Yes. Um, it would so scare maybe there's a, way, so. It certainly would. Mr. Mark, uh, I appreciate you spending uh, some time here chatting with me. Um, believe it or not, it's been 40 minutes. Wow, we're stopping our okay. I was just getting warmed up, relaxed, set in. You were just getting relaxed, just getting in. That just means we'll have to do a number two, you know, we'll have to have an interview number two at some point. I would really appreciate it. And I really truly appreciate you considering us. Uh, we love working with your team. You guys do a lot of great things with us. Uh, it was great having you out here in December and getting to let you guys see kind of our story and what we do. And um, you know, it, it meant a lot that you would even think to come come out and bring your whole team to our 
to our place. Uh, we're- if you recall, <laughs> when, when you first engaged us, you had said, hey, Ron, when are you going to come out and visit? And I said, uh, I don't go and visit my customers. And I, I'm saying that publicly here on the, the, uh, the show. I just don't do that. I, I'll see people uh, at trade shows or, you know, industry events. And uh, but then I remember when I called you and I said, you remember when you said you wanted me to come out and see your show, store? Well, how, how about I bring 30 people with me? And, <laughs> and uh, you're a- like, you were like, oh, boy. Yeah, so, I, did, I did have that oh, boy moment. So, yeah, the rest is history. Well, Mark, I know we all had busy days and our audience has a busy day. So we're going to get everyone back to their uh, daily, regularly scheduled programming. So, Mark, I just want to say one more time. Thank you, sir, for joining me on the show. It was my pleasure. Thank you very much. Also, have a great day. Awesome, buddy. All right, gang. So there you have it. Uh, Sorry for a little bit of the uh, Internet bandwidth issues. I think I got a little pixelated there uh, along the way, but hopefully my audio was carrying through. And uh, if you're out there, don't forget to like this post, uh, uh, comment, and uh, if you would be so kind, share it. That way your, your friends in the industry can ultimately hear these interviews. And uh, if they want, they can sign up for the event on our One Firefly Facebook page and get notices when there are future shows. They're, they're approximately every week. Depends sometimes whether I'm traveling or not, whether I can make that happen. Uh, now, speaking of Instagram, One Firefly also has an Instagram page, so please go out there and like it. We have been growing our Instagram following nicely since September. I think we have, at this point, over 500 people following us on Instagram, and uh, that is super cool. Uh, we have a great team behind that channel. I go into that channel and, and post uh, every now and again, and uh, my team keeps uh, a, a regular flow of fun interesting content there, both a little bit of work, a little bit of play, and uh, it's a great way to follow one Firefly. Now, additionally, I have our upcoming lineup. Uh, So uh, I don't think I can make that any bigger. So I think we'll just have to, you know what, maybe we'll do this. No, that's not making it any better. So there's the upcoming lineup. You can see I'm going to have Eric Thies uh, next week. And uh, it looks like uh, the text is actually too small for me to see the other name, but it's, I think it's a fellow named David. So David and Eric are going to be on, and uh, that should be a lot of fun. That'll be the 27th. And uh, the 27th is the day before my birthday, because my birthday is the 28th. So if you want to send presents, send them, look up One Firefly's website, send presents to the office address. I will receive them warmly. I'll appreciate that. Just kidding. Just uh, a nice hello or a text message or an email. That'll be fine. So uh, on that note, gang, uh, I appreciate everyone's time. Hope you have a great rest of your week. If you're suffering from allergies like I do, I hope you feel better and you find the right medication or some rest. And uh, I will see you guys soon. Thanks, everybody.